What's going on guys? Hope you're doing alright. Today we're talking about kombucha, or if you want to say it completely wrong, kombuka. Just kidding. Don't ever say it like that. Someone may slap you. Anyways, kombucha is a drink that is made out of tea, water, bacteria, and sugar. And what it does is that bacteria sits on top of it and impart some probiotic properties to the drink. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When you look at it, it looks like a swamp monster has hatched inside of this jar and it might be taking over your body sometime soon. But from over five years of doing this, it doesn't happen like that. I have loved drinking kombucha for a long time and it is commercially available now and you can get it anywhere now. But it starts to get a little pricey if you're drinking it every week. So that's when I decided to start making my own. And hopefully this video is gonna give you some tips on how to do it yourself if you wanna start, or if you just wanna learn the process so you can tell someone about it and make fun of uh, drinking gross stuff. In order to get started, what you need is a piece of this bacteria. So you can either check online interest groups that do this in your area to get a piece of it. You could buy a packet of it dehydrated on Amazon and rehydrate and create your own SCOBY. Or you could just go to the store, buy a bottle of kombucha and the SCOBY is already in there. Even if it doesn't, you know, you buy it at the store and it's not sitting on top of there. If you took the top off, and you sat it on the counter for a couple days, it would grow its own little thing on top. Now we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna dump it right in and get started. And the way this works is you do it in batches and once you have your SCOBY built, you break off a piece and you can reuse it with every new batch. So also to get started, you need a fermentation vessel, which generally is a big glass jar. I would recommend not using plastic and I would recommend not using metal for taste reasons and you know I'm gonna try not to get too woo woo in this video uh, but chemicals man so glass we're gonna stick with glass now you can also buy a glass jar like typically the size is a gallon you can buy a glass jar at the store or at Amazon you know or you can getting one of these pickle jars which are only a couple bucks, and you got yourself a gallon jar and scurvy because you ate a huge amount of pickle. So once you have your, your fermentation vessel and you make tea, it's so simple, it's stupid. You just make tea, sweet tea with regular black tea, regular sugar, and you let it cool down so it doesn't kill your SCOBY, and you put it in there and it does its thing. So let's talk stages of fermentation. Now, when you make your first batch of kombucha, all that's gonna be in there is your SCOBY and your tea. And that is called 1F, first phase of fermentation. And once that's done, typically around two weeks, you can take that out and you can drink it right then if you want. Just drink it right out of the bottle. Just kidding, don't do that. Typically you stick it in a bottle and you need to make sure those bottles get put into a refrigerator because when you have this SCOBY here, it is constantly emitting gas through the top of it, right? So it, if you put it and you set it on the counter, number one, it's gonna just go bad. Number two, you risk having a bottle bomb, right, over time. So if you're gonna drink straight out of 1F, put it in a bottle, put it in the refrigerator. And that's going to be, the same thing's going to be true in 2F. If you ever noticed, kombucha is always refrigerated. So that's the reason why. So the basic recipe for a batch of kombucha, a one gallon batch is as follows. One gallon of water is what you're going to need. Obviously that water is going to be used with tea bags, which I normally go seven plus tea bags. Now that can be black or green tea. It's gotta be caffeinated, black or green tea is the easiest way to do this. If you start adding teas that have other stuff, you're just risking your SCOBY being damaged, which you don't want. 
One cup of sugar goes into that tea. You don't want it over sweet and you don't want it under sweet. You have to feed that SCOBY the sugar. So one cup is what I normally use. And then two cups of your SCOBY starter. So that will be, this is when your brew is continuing. Before you bottle, you save two cups of your, the just pour off two cups of the top of your batch. That two cups is gonna go into your next batch. So you got your gallon of tea, you've got your two cups of starter, and then you just rip off one piece of your old SCOBY and put it in there. You can rip it in half and put it in there. The, the larger piece that you put in there, the faster it's gonna go. For a gallon batch, it normally takes around two weeks. Now I say around because depending on many, many factors, that time may change. Now what you're gonna wanna do is watch it, obviously, to make sure nothing's growing in it, and then second thing you're gonna do is you have to taste it after that week and a half mark to make sure it's on track for becoming correct. Now there will be a point where after it goes past a certain sourness, you're not gonna wanna drink it. So that would mean you're dumping the whole thing and you lose a little bit of money. Nobody wants that. So make sure that at that one and a half week mark, you start doing a test, just take a straw, dip it in there and taste it. Around that mark is when you're gonna start noticing those sour flavors. I would recommend if it gets to a point where it's almost sour enough, I would go ahead and bottle at that point. I have certainly killed too many batches by bottling a little bit too late, and then once that 2F happens, it's too sour. We're talking apple cider vinegar sour and it's freaking gross so don't do that so once you get your kombucha made you can drink it straight away it's fine how it is you can pour it into whatever bottle you want and drink it it's just going to taste like a sour tea but if you want to impart a flavor to it if you want to impart carbonation to it you're going to need to put it into a bottle for what we call 2F, or second stage of fermentation. What you do is you put it in there with your mix-ins, make sure that mix-in has a little bit of sugar in it so it can continue to ferment, and as it ferments, it's gonna let off gas, and if your bottle is closed tight enough, that gas is gonna be your bubbles. Once it's complete, you're gonna have fizzy drink. And if you're gonna, you put flavors in there, it's gonna be a fizzy, flavorful drink. It's gonna be awesome. Once you put your stuff in, you're gonna fill up your bottle probably two thirds of the way with uh, your tea. And then the last third is gonna be kind of your mix in and stuff. So, what are some good mix ins? I find I really like any type of spice. Spin the wheel of spices in your pantry and try it with something. So you got like cinnamon, you can do ginger, uh, cayenne, dill weed. I don't know. The possibilities are endless with this. You can also use fruit juices. Whatever fruit juice you happen to have lying around works. You can use frozen fruit. You can use fresh fruit. Uh, pretty much anything. And you're going to be able to give it the sniff test and tell you if it's going to be good or not. Some things I would avoid are mushy foods like melon or, you know, cantaloupe. Your results may vary, but you know, if you don't mind mushy floaty stuff in there, that might be fine with you. During this time is when you get to choose what you put in there. This is where the experimentation comes in and it's extra fun. Now with experimentation, you're gonna have fails and you're gonna have ones where you have to pour it right out, but you know, we're chasing those good flavors, man. So it's worth it. Now, how long does 2F last? That depends 100% on what you put in there. If you were just gonna take and try to make your drink fizzy, I would put a little bit of sugar in there and your kombucha, and I would give it two days. Now, you're gonna have to test it after a certain amount of time. Now, you can just take and, and crack it, you know, and once you crack it, if you see bubbles start to form, you're probably good. If you crack it and nothing happens, it needs to go a little bit longer. I find with fruit juice or frozen fruit even, it happens very fast. And uh, maybe one to two days, but it all depends on the sugar content of whatever you put in there. So let's talk bottles. 
What you don't want is for air to get in during your second stage of fer fermentation because air gets in there, it can cause it to not get as fizzy, and that's what people like. If you're like me, you had a bunch of bottles saved up from just drinking it. So those work perfectly well. Yet again, I like the glass. Now, they come with a top, and that top is just okay. And what you want is a bottle that can maintain pressure once it comes, liquid goes into it. Another option with bottles to keep the pressure in there is to use these still, you use the regular kombucha bottles and buy a, a different type of cap. Now this is like a pressure seal cap. So if you look, it's got kind of a graduated top that as you screw it down, it squeezes a seal in. So it's not gonna leak any air. What I find works the best are these types of bottles that are called swing tops. Now this is actually a beer bottle and you can buy a six pack of beer, Grolsch is the name, and you get six bottles. And see how that goes on there? It's got a rubber seal and you can squish it down. And it's reusable, big fan of these. You can also just buy them, you know, commercially available, Amazon or whatever. Again, I'll put up links. So I wanna talk about some things to avoid. And the first one is using other teas. Now, you want to use black or green or a mixture of those two teas only. Now, please do not go grabbing your grandma's chamomile or pudding flavored throat coat tea that you like so much. That cannot go into your first fermentation. It's gotta be black or green tea only. And the reason that you can't do that is because those teas contain oils and they contain other things that can harm and damage your SCOBY. And if you do that, you risk infection. And you're gonna hear that over and over. You're trying to keep this thing good so you don't have to throw anything out. If you feel like you need to use those teas and you say, hey man, quit killing my vibe. I wanna use my Earl Grey, bro. Well, I'll tell you what, 2F could be the place for that. Don't do it in the first phase of fermentation. Use it as a tincture in the second phase. And I have done that with great effect. So all you do is you brew an extra strong, extra strong batch of that tea you like and you just add that in there in your second phase of fermentation, you can get whatever flavor you want. So the other thing you wanna avoid is non-organic sugar. I know that's gonna be sounding a little woo-woo that we need to only use organics, but from personal experience, I have seen my SCOBY suffer. You can use it every once in a while, uh, non-organic stuff to, to make your tea, and that's fine. But for the most part, to keep your SCOBY strong, you need to use organic sugar. Now you might say that's too expensive. If that's the case, uh, use table sugar and see what happens. That's fine. The price is a thing, Zolka from Walmart, you can get it in a huge bag and it's organic sugar and it works fine for me and it's not that expensive. The third thing, this might be obvious, is hot temperatures. There is a waiting period after you brew your tea before you chuck your SCOBY in. Normally I like to do it overnight and let that tea sit overnight so it is room temp when you put your SCOBY in. If you put your SCOBY in with too hot a water, you'll kill it. So don't do that. Another thing, this might be obvious as well, is only do tea in your 1F. Don't experiment with trying to put a bed of strawberries or, you know, 20 oranges in there on your your one first phase of fermentation i promise it's gonna get infected just keep your first phase of fermentation the tea and the scoby and you'll be happy save all the flavors for 2f another thing to avoid on your 2f is high sugar stuff or just pay attention to how much sugar you're putting in as an additive now if you pick a fruit that has a high sugar content like a uh, pineapple and you chuck that in there, it's going to process a lot faster. So that, that pressure is gonna build up very quickly and you could have bottle bombs. Normally I like to take and stick my bottles in a cooler just to make sure if they blow up, it won't go everywhere. Something to keep in mind is that kombucha is alcoholic. When it ferments that sugar, what it's doing is taking the sugar 
and converting it to alcohol and that's how you get the sour taste and you do have a little bit of alcohol taste in there now it's not a lot in fact when you look at the bottle you got to search really hard to find it. There's a very small print here. Please note, kombucha is a fermented tea that has naturally occurring alcohol. Do not consume if you are avoiding alcohol due to pregnancy, allergies, sensitivities, or religious beliefs. Obviously, if you have a problem with drinking alcohol, don't drink kombucha. You'll feel bad. It'll be bad. Don't do it. I have heard the alcohol content as being described as the amount of alcohol that would be in your body if you ate an entire loaf of bread. Now, that seems a little wacky, but think about, uh, besides being extremely full and gross feeling, you're not going to be very buzzed after eating that much bread. Now, the other question you might ask yourself is what, after you rip off your SCOBY and you use it to make your next batch, what to do with the leftover SCOBY? Now, that has been a problem that has perplexed kombuchinators for many years. Now, and it all comes down to, you can do whatever you want to with it. A lot of people just throw it right in the trash. What it is, is a giant cake of yeast. So you can, and it is edible, because you're drinking its byproduct. Some ideas for you are, you know, cut it up and put it into salads. Cut it up and put it into another drink to give it kind of a sour zing like your Coke or something. These are compostable, so you can put it in your garden, you can put it into your composter. You could use it to make kombucha jerky. If there's any interest, I'll uh, make a video on how to do that. Whatever you choose to do with it, I got no judgment for you. All right, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the guide. Hopefully you can do this yourself, save some money, make some new flavors. Let me know if you've got any good recipes. I'm always looking for new stuff. Until next time, get out there and go make yourself some tea.